Since the dawn of time, different civilizations have used storytelling as a way to build identity or history. Those who write or frame photos shape the world around us through their words and gazes, setting up the scheme in which we are born and grown up, deciding routine or paradise, authenticity or artifice, pause and destiny. Get your feet wet. Share the Basque way. You can be the ambassador of one of the most culturally, naturally, artistically, and gastronomically rich regions in the world. Visit Euskadi. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the TBEX director, Chris Mitchell. Thank you, thank you. I wish you could do that every day. I feel, it feels great. Um, how's everyone doing today? Tempered. How's everyone doing today? Very nice, very nice. Uh, so first and foremost, welcome. Um, you've all made it here in one piece. You might be a little jet lagged, but um, I'm seeing a lot of smiles today. Um, thanks to everyone who came to the, the first timer session today. I feel like good energy. Um, the future is in good hands for sure after uh, seeing everyone there. So wonderful. Um, I know I'm very happy to be here uh, today. Uh, we've got a great team who's been working behind the scenes to make sure this is a really valuable conference for you guys. Um, the first thing I just want to mention before handing it off to, to some other folks and as people are are making their way in here is we have two more events this year because we never stop and sleep is overrated. Um, TBEX North America, you'll find us there in uh, beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico. We got a, a great lineup there. So if you like this event, um, you know, it's not too hard to buy a ticket to the next one if you really want to see us again and uh, see that introduction one more time. Uh, we also have the TBEX Summit in Anchorage, Alaska, the 23rd uh, to the 26th of September. Um, and uh, I was in Alaska a couple years ago. Um, any excuse to go back, I am here for. Uh, one more thing that I, uh, I wanted to, to mention before we thank our fantastic sponsors. Um, we're gonna run a little contest today. Kind of a little impromptu, but something we've been thinking about uh, for a little bit of time. When you're, uh, we don't have a formal event that's on tonight. So when you're out exploring today in this beautiful city of San Sebastian, if you use the uh, hashtag TBEX Basque Country um, in, in your adventure tonight, whether you're you know, eating somewhere fantastic, you're sipping on great wine, you come across a beautiful cathedral, something that connects you to this city, if you use the hashtag, we're gonna be tracking that hashtag tonight and we're gonna give away a free ticket uh, to a conference to, to somebody who, who we feel has captured the essence of this uh, beautiful, beautiful destination. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, 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 the main housekeeping. Um, I do want to take a moment to thank our sponsors here. Uh, first and foremost, Basque Tourism and um, Spain Tourism. Can we give a huge round of applause? <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and uh, I should probably get the clicker. We have more sponsors that we love and adore. Um, our Emerald sponsor, Travel Payouts. Feel free to clap each time, just so it's easier for me to switch slides. <laughs> to our Platinum sponsors, the Peloponnese, Quebec City, Mindhouse, Visit Anchorage, Discover Puerto Rico, and Donegal. To our gold sponsors, Donostia San Sebastian, and Cartu Stay 22. I practiced this, but I'm probably not gonna do well. Oren Gipusco, I'm trying to throw that TH in there. Kindly clap for me. Um, and that's all our sponsors. Uh, uh, honestly, this, these events don't happen without the, the collaborations and the, the teamwork that we have with our sponsors behind the scenes. Um, we are extremely grateful for them, so uh, a huge, huge thank you. Uh, speaking of wonderful sponsors, um, I'm very excited to announce, uh, well not announce, but to introduce our, our, our dear friend from Bass Tourism, Danny Solana. Can we give him an enormous round of applause?
Good morning, everybody. Egunon, as we say in Basque. Buenos días, Tibex. How are you? Fine, fine. Once again, welcome to the Basque country, Euskadi, as we say in Basque. I'm very glad and excited that we can meet again, but this time in this wonderful and charming town of San Sebastián, Donostia, as announced in Calamata last year. I hope you, you have been able to enjoy all the activities in which you have participated so far, since we have prepared them with great care. It has been a real pleasure to share these days with all of you. It's very important for us to give you the opportunity to know Euskadi throughout the week, making you share your experience with us. In short, a nice opportunity for you to become ambassadors of Euskadi. Now you are beginning the, to sense that Euskadi is much more than cities, much more than nature, much more than gastronomy. Euskadi is a little gem that has, Ill, has all this in, and much more. Euskadi is a welcoming, unique destination of contrasts. Euskadi is a diverse destination which welcomes and invites all people to enjoy it in a leisurely way, enjoying every corner. And above all, Euskadi is a responsible destination which is committed to perfect harmony between citizens and those who visit us, which respects our tradition and is committed to the avant-garde without forgetting our social responsibility and the firm commitment to environmental, social, and economic sustainability. Today, an extremely complete program of high-level presentations and speakers begins with undoubtedly, we will undoubtedly follow with interest. And this will be competing like this, you will stay in Basque Country. Finally, I don't want to end without thanking Rick with all, with all my heart. Rick, thank you very much for your admiration and affection for Euskadi. It's really touching. I was able to see in Kalamata how you conveyed your enthusiasm for the Basque Country to all those attending the event. I've got no doubt that you have become a good friend of this small region of the world. In the same way that now all of you, all of you here, can consider yourselves Basque and eternally welcome. I wish you all a fruitful Congress and good continuation enjoying Euskadi on the farm trips during the next week. As we say in Basque, Eskerri Casco, you can see it. Eskerri Casco, thank you very much. Say it again. Good, you have become Basque. Perfect. <laughs> thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Have a nice day. Well, my heart is officially full. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to cry on stage emotionally, but. Um, that's beautiful, and I, I also would, would kind of agree with, with, with Rick here with the sentiment that it's not hard to fall in love with this place. Um, there is a, uh, an unmistakable, unique heartbeat here that the moment you arrive, I feel like you're under the spell of Basque Country in the, in the best possible way. So everybody I've talked to here, um, I get the sense they've found their, their own meaning here um, because there's, there's I, I mean, I was walking up the beach yesterday walking past different T-Bexers who are here. I didn't see one person who wasn't smiling, so I think that says a lot about the destination. So if we can give one more round of applause for Basque Country, I'd love that. So I just have a, a, a few quick remarks. I won't keep you too long before we have a fantastic keynote speaker who's gonna come on. Just, I was mentioning some of this in our first timer session, but I just wanna say, you know, for everyone who's here, be excited, um, I think, you know, I always, my, my first kind of official TBEX was um, in 2017 in Jerusalem, and I remember arriving and looking around the room and, and seeing all these people, and I thought, how will I ever do what these people are doing? But that's not what it's about. It's about doing, you know, being the best version of yourself and finding your own journey. And, and the reality is this, this journey of being a creator, being a blogger, it's not hierarchical. It's not better or worse. It's your own journey. And, and the only thing you need to do is to compare yourself to the person you were yesterday. Um, and if you continue to persist and continue to move forward, you'll find that day by day you continue to grow. Um, I didn't think I'd be on this stage as director one day, but, but here I am. Um, 
and, and the reality is that I'm not unique in that. Everybody here has, has the power to, to manifest what they're dreaming of right now, and that's really the core of what this conference um, is about. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, you know, I remember again my, my first team, I like, saw all these speakers and I was intimidated. I thought, I'm going to start speaking to them and they're going to know I'm a fraud. <laughs> you know, I don't know anything what I'm talking about. But the reality is we've, we've chosen speakers to come on board here that, that have their arms wide open. Um, you know, what, uh, what is on the front of the name tag is I think nothing compared to what's in everybody's heart here. And, and I think that's what separates this conference is that you, know, you can feel free to come um, and, and speak to anybody. I mean, I think um, no one's off limits, um, you know, unless there's a lineup, but uh, it's not going to be for me, so no worries. Um, but, uh, you know, all jokes aside, go talk to people. Um, just go up and say, I I've seen some beautiful moments here of people going and talking to a speaker and saying, hey, you inspired me to start my journey. If you don't think speakers want to hear that and that doesn't fill their heart with joy, I mean, you're, you're, you're sorely mistaken. It's a, it's a beautiful moment for both sides, so go ahead and do that. Um, the, one other thing I was saying this morning as well is, and I've just kind of alluded to a little bit here, is everybody's on their own journey here and all of them are valid. Um, you know, you'll, every single person here does something better than me. Every single person in the crowd will do something better than the speaker that's up there. It's all how you frame it. Um, and that's kind of the way success functions. So just be you um, day by day and spread your rings a little bit wider. Uh, the final thing I was gonna say is, I mean, this right now, Everything going on in the industry, it, it feels like there's new news every day, up, down, and all around. Um, you know, I think the core of this group, really creative, really bright, really resilient. Um, I think conferences like this become more and more valuable. So you can actually talk to people, how are you faring, how are you doing, how are you succeeding? Um, and the room, you know, the, the, the main message I have for everybody here today is that there's room for everybody su to succeed on your own terms, and a community like TBEX will be here to, uh, to applaud you along the way. So that, those are the main messages that I want to convey to you guys, um, and just um, make the most of your time here. Enjoy it, savor it, be present, um, and then take those takeaways and start building that future. And, and, and the beautiful thing is, you'll come to your next TBEX, you'll be farther along. You'll come to your next TBEX, you'll be farther along, and you know, before you know it, you'll be on the stage. And, uh, and it's a beautiful journey, um, but you'll have people, no matter where they are, whether on the stage or otherwise, that will be supporting you along the way. And that's what it's all about. It's an open arms community. I am uh, thrilled um, to, to, uh, to introduce the, our keynote speaker for this morning. Um, I had a wonderful opportunity to get to know him yesterday. He's someone I've looked up to and admired for a long time. When I started my journey 15 years ago, he was a couple years ahead of me, and I thought, if this guy can do it, maybe I can give it a try. But it, it meant a lot to me to get to know him on a personal level we were talking about. Um, you know, we would go in and out of looking at the scenery and being like, wow, and then be like, let's talk about, you know, <laughs> the ins, ins and outs of Google. But that's the way things go at a conference like this. Um, I am uh, really thrilled and I want everyone to give a huge round of applause. This guy is an OG, underlined, capital, bolded. Um, so we are uh, absolutely thrilled to welcome next Melvin from Travel Dudes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's nice that you say OG. <laughs> because OG, my son, he's, he's 13. And he said, hey, OG. And I said, do you know what that means? He said, no, what is it? I said, original groupie. Because with all the YouTube videos and stuff like that, I don't know, uh, okay. Um, getting into that OG stuff, um, just like to very quickly talk about what I've done in the past year. So I run Travel Dudes for 16 years. Um, Travel Dudes is an online guidebook. It's a community. We do video production and mainly it's um, destination marketing campaigns. Um, I've got a team with content creators, we work with tour operators, hoteliers, and um, also with many, many travel bloggers, and we help each other, and that's what we do all those years. I've been a partner of I Ambassador. Um, on the website it says boutique agency, in the end it's a kind of a marketing, like a blogging agency. Um, and we did like very, very successful campaigns with um, professional travel blogging, and I'm also the co-founder of the Social Travel Summit. And with all this kind of stuff over the last 16 years and with the experience, I think we played quite a major role in creating the, the industry of professional travel blogging. And well, and that's like with the OG, that's like for me, it, 16 years is quite some time, 
but that I hope it doesn't make me old. I think it makes me more like a pioneer. And, but before I did that, I've been a travel agent for 10 years. And if you combine that now, that makes me old. <laughs> At least I feel like that. Not really yet. Um, I've got 66 slides for 45 minutes, so we have to rush through. But I want to give you a couple of takeaways, and you will see that icon on the one other slide. And that's like how I feel sometimes in our industry, when there, and there's some stuff where I think, ah, damn, here goes something really wrong. And we should discuss that, and we should just think about that, and maybe we can change something about that. And who of you is an influencer? Everybody? Influencer, have you ever actually thought about that kind of word? Like, I mean, I personally, if one tries to influence me, I am taking a step back and say, no, I'm doing all the opposite, no matter what you tell me. I find that I can think for myself, and I know like most of the bloggers, I mean, you guys, you are free souls. You're digital nomads, most of you. Maybe you quit your job because someone told you what to do, and you wanted to do something else, and you wanted to do it for yourself. And that was one of my reasons. And then there's people, when you look on Instagram, they call themselves travel influencers. I didn't thought that the screen is that big. I didn't want to show all those names. <laughs> and I hope you're not part of that. I don't, um, we have to make it black afterwards to re-edit it. Um, but actually, the real influencers, traditional media. Have you thought about that? If it's TV, newspaper, whatever it is. Have you ever seen them calling themselves influencer? They influence the world far better and far longer, far more professional than we have ever done. So just consider the word influencer. And if you want to call yourself that, especially to your audience. My influencers are my friends and my family. And they influence me every day, which is good. Well, they don't tell me, I'm, hey, daddy, I'm your influencer. <laughs> I, I should be the other way around. Maybe it's both ways. Um, so in the end, when, when you think about that, and don't tell anyone, I'm an influencer, you're an influencer. We're all influencers. But make sure where you use that word. If we're here on a conference, if we go to a trade fair like ITB, WTM, it's business to business. Yes, you're an influencer. Tell them. Don't maybe use the word, but sure, you can influence. But to your audience? Just consider that. Professional influencers, I've seen that, that's, that's no pretty old slide, but there's this guy, ice cream selling, and he puts up a sign, influencers pay double. Well, when you think my, what I'm saying, telling you, everyone is an influencer, everyone needs to pay double the ice cream. I don't think that he thought about that. <laughs> um, but if you are going there and you want to be a professional influencer, and you can't pay your own ice cream, I change the job. Okay, now we get to content. Uh, do you know that temple? <laughs> do you know that photo? Obviously, this is like, I'm going back into the past now a bit, like these were the, the problems we had in the past. And I, it's a beautiful photo, and I still want to throw up. <laughs> because, when I travel there, that's what I want to see. But then I get there and I see this. And it's good, but it's definitely not like that. And if I would influence my audience to travel there and they get there and it looks like that, they should be annoyed and they should not come really back to me. And, or like in a, and with a bad comment maybe. On the other side, we know how, probably we all know how the, the um, photo was created. And there's this creative guy with a mirror taking all the, the photos and it looks good. But that's also like the big problem we had in the past with the damn algorithms who force us to go into lavender fields and take photos like that. And we destroy tulip fields and we get into dangerous position on cliffs and stuff like that. And it's, it were really massive problems. Thanks, Instagrammers. <laughs> um, it's not just us, so it's also the fashion shows who did that, but it, lead, it, it led to a position where there have been really farmers and said, please don't do that, you are destroying our work. We work so hard for that. How did you guys get here? Like that? 
Well, I, I was on a Lufthansa, not like, n not even a business flight. But, but hey, this is the past, that's all good. We don't need that anymore. You know why? I mean, first, who travels like that? And oh, when I see that, okay. But th we don't need that anymore because we've got AI, we've got the Pope. <laughs> And now the AI. I love what's going on right now, in the, and it, it's, I'm so fascinated about AI. I'm using it in different kind of ways, and it's, it's threatening our industry, huge time, big time. And it seems that you haven't noticed yet because you're still sitting here. You still want to become professional travel bloggers. You should be scared of AI. But on, the, on the other side, there's also opportunities. There, I'm really reflecting the industry. I've been to the AI World Summit, and I've spoken, and I was picking brains like crazy there. And since then, I was really into that topic. I read everything about that. Because it's, it's about my business. I want to see if I can still like run my business in the next couple of years, or do I find an exit strategy before <laughs> and run a bed and breakfast. And, but I, it's fascinating, but we have big challenges. But that's being an entrepreneur. It is about challenges. AI is a big, massive one, but there are ways how we could run this. First of all, we don't need to travel anymore. We can create a text and we say, okay, yeah, that's a great destination. And I've been there and we, in, in the end, I've never been there because it doesn't exist and I'm still sitting in my tiny office. Um, now it gets creepy. <laughs> At the AI, AI World Summit, a guy told, we, we were in a really good discussion and the guy said, so what is the World Wide Web standing for? Spamming and scamming. Big parts of it, apart from the porn. But the guy asked me, why is that? I thought, wow, that's a really good question. I've never really thought about that. And he said, well, you have to see what happens. There are so many developers in the world. And he said, a single country like India push it out, pushes out 400,000 developers every year, and that's just one country. All over the world are developers. Smart people. You can get, because there are so many developers, you can f you find developers who work for you for five hours and um, five dollars per hour. If those people can't make a living, they don't go back maybe in their old jobs, maybe to their parents on the field or wherever that was. They start spamming and scamming. Maybe, not most of them, maybe just 5%, but that's enough to create the situation. That was also the past, because now what we now have is, it already started, we haven't really noticed yet, but it already started, and in the next two, three, five years, it will get chaotic, because we have spamming and, sc on, and scamming on AI level. That guy is part of that. <laughs> um, I'll show you why. That is a video. And on the, on the left, you see the guy with a mask and a towel. And it's a live video, I, I won't play that now. It's a, but, but you get it, he's moving, and the, the, the girl is the AI avatar created live. So when he moves, and it's, that is creepy. What you can do with that in a ne negative way. Um, but it gets also like fascinating, and that's, for example, that's I'm going to play you. That, that, like, for example, they take a photo of the Mona Lisa or any photo of a, not like a 360 or something like that, and we can let her sing. I don't play no yard. See, I go pop, 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 pop. My camera's up your crotch. See, I tell the truth from what I see and sell it to Perez Hilti. Don't call me scuzzy, making money. That's my job, celeb photography. What hell no, I'm not needy. I'm legit, not stockerazzi. Don't act so hotsy totsy, bitch. I know that oh, you from Jersey. Yo, I'm a paparazzi. I don't play no yard. See, I go pop, 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 pop. Maybe I clicked see, somewhere I else, huh? I tested that earlier. I played something else. Don't call me scuzzy, making money. That's my job, celeb photography. What hell no, I'm not eating. I'm a shit, I'm stuck on Rossi. Don't act so hotsy totsy, bitch. I know that you from Jersey. Yo, I'm a... That's a trick. Shut it off. Okay. That's funny. You tested it a half an hour earlier. Everything works. And, uh, okay. 
but it's so impressive. You've got a face and they can create a video out of that. There's a couple of um, others beneath that as well and it's so impressive because also that guy on the right, it's one picture and it shows in, in different moods and it's just like one picture and it's created in a couple of seconds. And that was the other one. I got really creative. I said, I, I typed in a prompt and said, give me, a, create me a music like a song of a, of a road trip in a blues style. Not very creative. Uh, but 30 seconds later, I've been wandering, traveling far and wide. Uh, not awesome, but 30 seconds, give me five minutes. That's <laughs> but like this kind of stuff, I mean, in, in a video production, you type in a prompt and you suddenly you create your own music. You, I don't know about the, the, um, the license, about the rights, look in, into the details, but this is going to change our industry big time. AI, have you seen this one? The quality of this video is so impressive. It's like two, three sentences and you get footage nowadays, super impressive. The first, one of the, not probably not the first, but like a film, like, like a, um, a music video created by AI. Not the best video, but if you would have produced it, that would have cost already quite a bit. Instead, we need to get creative again. Strike big cocks like Belle Delphine did. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, she got a lot of likes for that and a lot of attention. <laughs> but this is like, we've been creative in the past. Don't use AI like crazy. Use it smartly. If you don't use it, you're going to miss out. You can stop your business more or less. Don't do everything you can do with it. But pick your stuff. You can use it for SEO and this and that. You will find on the, out on this conference far more how you can use it. Last year. Content again. TBEX Kalamata. We had this beautiful day, sunny sailing trip. Oh, no sun, I should have used AI for that. <laughs> um, but it was fun on the boat, on the sailing boat. And this is pretty much like a typical picture nowadays, what you see when you see influencers, bloggers or whatever. And it's missing out the story. Because we arrived with that boat on the beach. And I know we are stuck in an algorithm and the, the channels are pushing us into vertical images. So of course you, you are going to feed it like that, but just consider that. What we do, I'm, I'm talk, talking from a professional perspective, running I Ambassador with paid campaigns where it's about getting paid and having happy clients. It's destination marketing. And it's not just like our face, but it's we, are, we want to promote the destination. And with that, you are selling a gray sky, but not the story with the boat. And uh, your audience, I mean, they are not that dumb. They can do this. <laughs> I can. That was the hotel. It's not the best picture. It was on the way back after too many beers. So... But that one is still better, horizontal. Still a bit too much beer, too much blue, but especially with the sky, it's, it's useless. If you, you are, it's like um, stuff you could like really improve on. Um, we've been um, on the path of gods and we produced a video where you hike from Bologna in Italy to Florence beautiful path and um, I think it was the second day something like that and, and I took that photo and it looks already good but that looks so much better so sometimes bring your people your audience to turn the phone choose the content where you use vertical it fits sometimes but destination marketing is a lot of times more this getting to stories with iAmbassador, we created a database with bloggers and we created our own reporting system because the reporting systems on the market were not good. We had access to the real data in live and we could see what Instagram is also seeing and the stats and stuff like that. 
and I know that so many of you do stories. And my clients ask me to do stories. And if you're good in that, do the stories. If I look into my time, like into my stats, it would look around that with the reach and Facebook and Instagram. The Instagram stories are now made up because I don't do stories, because I realized something. They don't work, it's dead content. I looked into the database and this is a typical campaign. You can't spot the numbers now, so I put it up a bit like that. And there were like five bloggers on the campaign. And there's one who is really good in stories. That's the blogger number one. And she's one out of 100. I, I know who that is. And I know all the others. Very rarely, Instagram stories is your best channel. Let's focus on the blogger number two. The best channel from blogger number two is Instagram, the normal timeline, and she posted four posts and reached 20,000 people for post for a paid campaign. So you expect to be professional and deliver the best results. She posted 100 stories, reaching on average 800 people. She's wasting so much time. And I had big discussions about that because I told a friend, a blogger, Stop with that. And she said, yeah, but I just do it on the go. I, said, oh, I doubt that. And at that moment, I was looking on how long it took her to edit and stuff like that, to put in the keywords, the hashtags, and I don't know what. It is quite more time than you think. And I'm not saying don't do the stories, but make it opposite, or more or less. Have 20 stories, but have more of your best channel. For that, you need to look into your stats. Find your best channels, and it's not tough. You go through it, it's all listed in the analytics. You create a spreadsheet, you put it all up into a spreadsheet, it takes you half an hour, and then you know what is your, your best performing channel, and then you have to find a strategy how to use it. And that's like where you become professional. And when your client comes to you, can you do stories? Tell them that, because most tourism boards or brands have no idea of that either, and they don't know your stats, because everyone is just doing what everyone else is doing, which is stories. It's dead content, and mostly you don't even get the reach. If you, would, if you do, great. Go to your client and say, I know my audience, I know my channels, I'm going to do a very good job, but instead of stories, you will get a couple of stories. I can create content for your own stories or whatever, but let me do my job the best way I can. So from that group, if I would have to pick one, I would go even for Blogger 5, because Blogger 5 has in a total only 17,000, no wait, 40,000, 41,000 followers, and she reached in that campaign 250,000 people. She still wasted 99 stories. If she sh would have swapped, she would have been far more successful. So you have your data, you know your channels, now it's about scaling and monetizing it further. And you start putting your content out and you boost it. And we have really good content. We have inspiring content which people love. The algorithms in general love it. And you can see that in the advertising prices. So when I put my up the ad advertising, the average advertising on Facebook is one cent for um, one, one view, cost per view. When I do my campaigns, it's less than zero. Well, less, less than zero? <laughs> okay, but zero, 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 eight, one. Again, I put up in, in a spreadsheet, I put all the numbers in there, I know how much money I, I, I boost the content with, and I can make a very easy calculation, and I can say, okay, my partner, my client, um, I, I provide you a package, and I can estimate that we reach half a million people, because I'm going to, and that's like I, I push specific markets. I'm not pushing markets which are not of interest. So we created, for example, a campaign for Austria, and this was only targeted for the UK audience. And I targeted people who are into travel and into winter sports. And we reached over one and a half million people, and the cost per view was two cents. 
ah, two cents, yeah, but we just saw the average is one cent, so why is it double? Well, we produced 14 videos, seven of them had a length of each of 10 minutes, we had like three teams traveling into the destination for a couple of days, seven different ski resorts. And my price, the two cent, includes the production costs. Normally you would pay for the production and then you start boosting and then you have an average of one cent. We are so successful, we can, with our content, we can be so successful that we are better than the average advertising prices and we get paid for that. I paid three teams for that. The videographer, the moderator, and myself. <laughs> and I love videos. And for the next slides, that's really my big passion, creating production of videos. Now, very carefully look at the next slides I'm going to show you. What have you seen? What was the first slide about? Someone have seen it? Why, why, no response, why? It was too quick, right? Far too quick, and it was slow. This is like how I pressed here, this is how most of us are editing videos. And it's a very simple reason for that. It's the big video bubble we are in. Most of us create very good looking videos and they look good, cinematic videos. Most of us are not really professional, we haven't really learned that. And we learn from each other. And it was around 12, 13 years ago, at the beginning of more or less of, of YouTube, of travel, of travel and stuff like that, there were like two or three videos which were highly, very quickly edited and they became extremely successful with many views in a couple of days. And everyone started copying that style. And that was pretty much the start of this bubble and it grew bigger and bigger and bigger. You have to think about that, that what we do is destination marketing and you have to show the destination. Now you see there's a river, there's two guys kayaking, there's a church on the right, there's maybe a cafe, and it takes five seconds until our brain takes that. That's Dave, one of our moderators, dressed up. He's standing on a rock, he's having a horn and being a shepherd. You see cows in the back, you see the landscape. It needs a couple of seconds. And it has nothing to do that I'm already so old that it takes longer. And you can see that on the daily behavior. My son, 13 years old, he shows me something. Well, he's not allowed to TikTok, but let's say YouTube shorts or whatever. A video edited like that, da -da -da -da. and then he stops. At the moment he stops or rewinds, you can see that it's really badly produced content. The last time you've seen a Hollywood movie, when did you pause it? When did you rewind it to see the scene again? Never, I guess. Maybe with the Titanic, the last scene. <laughs> and again and again and again, or dirty dancing. But normally you watch a video, you get it. And the videos we produce, and everyone, most of them, it's more like music videos, but we are not producing music videos. If you do it for, for a hobby, that's good. But if you want to be a professional travel blogger, it's destination marketing. It's not selling yourself, it's not selling the clothes, you're selling the destination, show the destination. I could show you many examples of other people doing it wrong. I want to show you how we did it wrong. And we've been in Dresden and it's a nice video. And you see different, maybe I quickly go back again. When we talk about production and, and filming, you've got 12 angles to show and video something. Most people, professional people, use six, eight different angles to tell a story. So when you have a bottle and you open it, you can come with different angles and at that time each shot is getting a, um, completes a scene and a mini story. And then you can edit a bit quicker because your mind, your, your eyes see always the glass. 
So you don't always have to give like eight seconds of video content, use different angles to tell the story. And then you can edit a bit quicker. And also in a video sometimes in between, you can be a bit quick and go for it. So our videographer was in, in Dresden and you see musicians, it's one take and no, they're gone. I wanted to see more, there's a museum and it's gone. People fighting, gone, not another shot. We are not telling a story, we are just showing very quick pictures, gone again. I haven't seen that now. There's a market, oh, what are they selling? Oh, damn, it's gone. Oh, the beer garden, oh, what kind of beer do they have? Oh, no, no, no beer. <laughs> The client loved that video. I think we did a really bad job. So, and it took a while to understand that. I got this feedback from my sister. I had a very nice video, but I, you had, it was too quick. I, I, it took me a long time to understand that. A good friend of mine, he creates for BBC all those um, big shows, the reality TV shows. He's producing 100 shows and one makes it into TV. He's really, he's a um, director, um, he went to the New York video school, um, director school, and he's like really top guy in his business. And he gave me lots of feedback. And so we were talking about that. I, and suddenly I got it. And then I told my videographer, who's a real smart ass, he's really into video, but it took him a long time to understand this kind of bubble of fast editing. And I think with this video, we did already better. And he used What's different up, angles. I'm Jenna, so that's and Jenna, we're Paris, and we were in Paris, destination it as season. a winter destination. Welcome to Paris in the winter time. So that's just like a bit of the, in, um, of the intro. Our sponsor was you Orange the Tele Company, and then we dive into the destination. The Eiffel Tower, the Sacre Coeur, the Louvre Museum. So the that's Bastille more like Tower, to give a kind of overview, River. and now we get more already so into the video. Deeper into the streets of Paris. So she says, go into the streets, and we show the streets. We show the people walking. You see, there's a boat. People walk along the the river. They are in the park. It's still like all just like. Obviously also with the music, it's a bit different, but you can see you get far more the idea. It's cold, but you get a hot coffee, a glühwein. You can get like um, your public transport card. It shows it in different angles. Obviously because it's a sponsor, we try to include them rather quickly in the video. We show how they enter the store. It's a different angle again. It's a long time until she arrives there. Do you get the idea? It's different shots all together, it's mini stories created, and the viewer doesn't have to pause it, and they get the story. And because you jump from one to the next place, it doesn't get boring. We create this video in 20 minutes, and you can watch it through, and it won't get boring. So when you enter video, just give it some thoughts. It can take some time. It took me a while to understand that. Um, <coughs> It's about collaborations as well, what we do. Especially when we come to AI, it gets tough. Our job in the future, we have to be getting much stronger. We fight all the past years against publications where little newspaper work with 50 people full time. And well, I don't really believe in competition. I believe really in working together. But in some way, obviously, traditional media was a kind of a competition in the past. And as a blogger, you should have never been able to compete with them. But as working together, we were. And I think that's where we have to get back to. It's difficult because especially on a business level, it's also about money. It's not like sharing for free your polls against mine. But we have to find collaborations on a business level. In the future, I think what we have to talk about is the metric of the money you make per user. And who would like to have a piece of cake? And I hope you like strawberries. And which one would you take? Which slide? The orange one or the orange and the green one combined? Who wants the orange one? No one? Why do you go all for the orange one then? Because that's what you do. You go for 5 to 10%. I 
prefer the 20, 25 percent. I told you in the introduction I've been a travel agent. When I sold a hotel, I got 10 percent commission. I stopped that, I started travel route, and suddenly I get only 4 percent from booking. I'm doing the same job. So why do I get not the same money? So we've got booking, we got get your guide and all the OTAs. And then there's also, and they're also present here in the room, <laughs> the aggregators. They get even in between. Usually they don't take our commission directly, but they take their money, uh, the part of that whole bucket as well. So they get a super commission. So when you get 8% because they put all of us together, they get an extra commission that's like what they make a living of. Um, State 22, for example, they even take my commission from booking, a big part of that. I get back to that later. I'm, I don't mean that in a negative way. It sounds like it. <laughs> um, so I, I'm not saying don't work with them, but choose where to work with them. It can be successful, it can really help you, but just don't go for it every single time. Booking. They take more or less 25% of what they make. They, um, the 25%, that's like what we get out of that. That's more roughly about 4%. And it's session tracking. Seriously? I've been a travel agent. No one comes in, books or comes in the first time and goes away. First of all, they wanted in the past digit, um, printed stuff, they wanted a magazine, a catalog. It takes days, weeks, months from the moment we inspire someone until they book something. And usually they are not coming back to us. Session tracking, they kick our ass, they, they treat us really badly. They might tell you, you oh, well, first, let's say you book a hotel, 100 euros, so you get like 3 euro, 4 euro, 5 euros out of that. In, instead of maybe 15 or 20. That's already a big difference. They might tell you, yeah, but you can also get like a bigger portion of the cake. And if you deliver 500 and more bookings, you get 40% from what we make. And usually booking charges 15, 20%. I've even heard from some hoteliers, they charge 30, 35%, depending on the packages and services. Let's say, we are selling 500 hotels per month and we get 40%, which is around six, eight euros. Per month, this makes 3,000, 4,000 euros. If we make that as affiliate income per month, awesome, that's good. We can work with that. But if you can make eight or 10,000, huh, thanks booking. So what, what can we do different about that? 12 years ago, I've um, tried already to change that because a lot of hostel owners, hoteliers, they were unhappy. So I said, well, let's, because they don't like booking either and they want to reduce that. They want direct bookings. So I said, okay, let's do that. But the, um, at that moment, the systems were not really up to that. Nowadays, most of the hoteliers and tour operators, they work digital as well with a reservation system. They don't know that, but their reservation system usually includes affiliate tracking codes and links. I will write an email to an hotel, can we work on that base? First of all, I get, no, we don't want you to stay for free in our property. I said, did you read my email? I don't want to stay in your hotel for free, I want to sell it. Can I have your affiliate link? Oh, no, sorry, we don't have that. Okay, I do their job now. I go to their, to their reservation system, I check it up. Ah, oh, they have an affiliate link. Here it is, now we can work. That's the part with the hotels, so they really are behind the game. With the two operators, it's already different. Um, you see a couple of them here listed of that website. You, took you should take a photo of that one because that makes you money. So I go, for example, on Bokun. That's um, a trip advisor company now. They've got a marketplace. Every day, I get a tour operating coming to me and telling me, here, 20, 25%. So the way that works is, Bokun wants you to sell it actively on your website, so you become a kind of an OTA. This is something you have to be careful about. Um, 
and that's something I don't really want to get into yet, so I prefer the affiliate link, so I use, I, I forward my user to the website of the tour operator. And that's where it also can become tricky because maybe that website doesn't work properly. So you might lose conversions and bookings. And that is the nice part of Viator and Get Your Guide and all the others. Because if the kayak tour I'm offering and I recommend is not the right thing, they have all the competition lined up. So maybe you get a conversion through something else. And that's where you can work with OTAs in a really good way because their websites are amazing. But when I'm traveling and I'm in a personal contact with a tour operator, I want to promote his business. And I'm actually not even interested that much in monetizing it and making money like crazy. For me, it's really the most important. It's like working together. I like this guy. He's a great tour guide, a great service. I want to promote him. So I might lose a couple of bookings, but in return, he gives me 20, 25%. And I'm fine, that makes it up again. Does it work, does it not work? Yes and no. It's, it's the beginning, I started that road like a year ago, testing it out, and I see it works. It, it needs to get improved, it's mostly about communication, that's your role as well. You have to register on those kind of website, and you need to show, okay, we, I would like to have it this and that. You have to get into that. I made, I sold a tour, I think that was Zanzibar, for above $1,000. I got nearly $300 back again. If I would have done that with an OTA, this would have not even been $100. And when you see that come money coming in, that's like, oh, that's nice, that's good. Let, now we come to state 22 again, an aggregator. It took me over a year to collaborate and to partner up with them because I was skeptic, I was really skeptical about that. And I had a lot of questions, long emails, forth and back. And I said, you know what? And I, I saw big success stories about that. I give it a try. Three days later, they, four days later, or, I already had more bookings through them than through my other affiliate stuff. And I was like, wow, that's cool, impressive. And my content is not really focused on accommodation yet like that. It's obviously, it's in there, but I can do much better and I will. And I think they should also like find a way to get the bigger margins and the better, big, bigger commissions and then share it again with us because like when we share the 4% together, it's, it's not good, but they have a great system. And that is also with the others, with travel payouts. I think I know that they also have published and created another tool in a similar kind of way. I haven't tested it yet, but I, when I read about it, I said, wow, that's cool. So there are ways to work together. You have to find yours. Sometimes you, um, you, you include OTAs, aggregators. Sometimes you want to work with, um, like with the tour operator direct, directly. Um, that's for the industry. I took a look at the database. That was before the last Google update, I have to say. <laughs> But there were like 300 travel bloggers and they reached 10 million people per month. This is really impressive. This is the where you can find the value. And it's not on direct media. Di I'm saying direct media. A lot of people call it still social media. Those times are gone for 10 years. <laughs> we built up our audiences and we are paying for, to reach our audiences. That's not social. Don't call it social media, it's direct media channels. As an industry, try to create these kind of values, try to work and find collaborations. The same goes also like you as bloggers, don't try to fight your own game, try to create partnerships with the brands, with the destinations, with other bloggers as travel dudes, well, and that is like, I know that a lot of bloggers lost 90% of their traffic. Don't give up yet. Google is trying to figure out the internet right now again, including their own strategy. It's a very tough job with the AI, because right now AI is feeding content which it was trained from AI. And AI content 
is good if you base it on facts and if you use your own knowledge, knowledge and experience, you can create something out of it. But altogether, be careful with AI content. So if you got hit by the algorithm of, of Google search, don't give up yet. Try to find partnerships. I was really happy, lucky, our reach got tripled. I'm here to collaborate with the industry, with the bloggers. We can help really each other. And then we have to see how we can make that work. And these kind of challenges is part of being a professional entrepreneur. I, I've gone through nightmares. That's a complete different session. But that's like, it for now I've got three more minutes. I did it. <laughs> 66 slides. Okay. I hope they, I gave you a kind of ideas to think about. It's not all just like, wow, it's, you might say, oh, I don't see that different. That's exactly what I wanted to, to achieve. Give you some thoughts about that. And then we can discuss that later, tonight with a beer. So yeah, firstly, a uh, huge round of applause. We have about five minutes for questions. Rick's gonna get uh, a microphone. I think, you know, with any keynote, you hope you have a lot to think about. Um, also, somebody who's just gonna stand up here, use their experience and tell it like it is, I think, you know, we probably all are sitting here with uh, a few notes and a few things to think about, and that's why partially we wanna get uh, a couple questions in. But uh, one more round of applause for a moment. That was fantastic. We'll, we'll take a couple questions here. Uh, if you have a question um, for this OG of travel blogging, um, we'll feel free. Um, do we have any hands? Hey, Melvin, that was great. Um, I just wanted to know, since you are an OG, uh, what do you think that you see now that has been such a big benefit that you didn't get or you didn't have access to before not using AI? Uh, with AI, hmm. well, for example, um, I've been working with a tour operator in Zanzibar, and I, so my, I, I've got like an idea, or I had an idea, because like when we travel with a campaign into a destination, we are there for a couple of days, we produce content, and we pretend to our audience we are experts after four or five days. Obviously, we are not. The real expert is the tour operator in the destination. So I work with a lot of tour operators. I tell them, okay, create a travel tip, non-commercial for me, provide me the text. And I got info from them, and it was horrible. I couldn't really read it. I put it in AI, I got a great article out of it. <laughs> so there's ways to really work with AI. Maybe very quickly also, to understand what we are facing right now. The internet, 70% of the internet is informational content, and that's what we are doing. We are providing information. Google search makes, I think, 60%, you said, like of revenue of the advertising of that huge, massive company out of the Google ads, but not of the 70% of informational content. 30%, it's about selling products. If it's a flight, if it's a jeans or whatever it is, that's where they make their money. And that will still exist because they can't cut this off, this revenue stream. But we can't, in the 70%, we can't put up ads and pay for audience to come to our website, like what we might have done on Facebook and other channels. We can't compete with Booking.com, who charge 25% of, of their com, um, accommodation as a commission. They put lots of that money into advertising. If we can't in get better in selling our stuff, we won't be able to compete maybe there. So we need to find new structures to increase our revenue stream. And I think especially with the affiliate, with the direct affiliate, that can play a big difference in future if we want to survive AI. AI is so big, it's such a massive thing, but, and we, many things, I, I was not really shocked of AI in general in the past couple of months and year. But especially now with Google changing and their search, this will like change a lot for us. Do we have another question we'd like to take? Coming to you. By the way, Melvin, thanks for saying something nice about Stay 22. <laughs> I agree. 
Um, you showed the, the two videos and compared them, and you said that you liked one over the other, and I agree, but was there data behind that that said like, oh, one was cheaper to boost or had better engagement or anything like that that proved that the other one was better? Oh, sorry again, I didn't really get in. He was asking if you had statistics to prove that the one video you showed was actually better than the other, ah, as performance-wise. Yeah, well, I don't have an affiliate link in the video. <laughs> um, well, it's feedback, right? I mean, it's just like when you show a video to someone, um, and my sister don't ask me, oh, it's too quick and stuff like that. I mean, in the end, it, it's with the things I said, it, for me, it's pretty logical. The thing is, you might not get as many reach and views. I get that. Maybe with a quick edited video, you get maybe 10,000 views or 20,000 views. But it's more like an audience for music, video, watchers, whatever. I prefer an audience of 5,000, but who are really into the video and where I can sell the destination. It's very hard to sell to your client and to your partners that less is more valuable. The thing is ex um, the same, like when we do a, a video production, we create little teaser videos, maybe just like eight seconds long. Um, we put it on direct media, create a big amount of reach, and then we lead them to our article with a call to action and a link. And obviously it's nice to, to show, hey, this video got like 20,000 views. But the real valuable readers are the ones who go onto our article and read this whole guide and where we embed the long video with maybe 10 or 20 minutes long. And that's where you can drive conversions with affiliate links and stuff like that. And I think that's like, in, yeah, also with that kind of video, it's pretty much similar. So it's the combination of both and how you form your strategy to make that work. So even there, I, can, I might have a video with high editor very quickly. Use it smartly. Terrific. We're, we're actually just going to uh, wrap that up, but Melvin will be here. Um, yeah. I can attest for the fact that we had some conversations pretty much along the lines of, of your presentation today. I, did, I hadn't seen the presentation yet, but it was very, uh, it was, uh, there were some precursors there. Um, I just want to get, can we give one more uh, round of applause here? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Good. So Fantastic. So uh, we're going to round, uh, round this out with uh, some, a little bit of excitement. Um, we will be um, announcing right now our destination for 2025 North, uh, TBEX North America. Now, obviously, I'm going to build this up just for a moment. Um, this is a, a destination, um, a city that it, I personally love. Um, I was there working with their team a few months ago. Um, I'm biased. I think I did some great work for them. Um, but I also really fell in love with the city. It's, uh, to me, um, there's no other city like it. Um, and I can say that uh, from, from personal experience. Uh, there's, a, there's a vibe there that you won't find uh, somewhere else. And I think when you see what the destination is, um, you know, I'd be surprised if you, uh, if you wouldn't be excited to visit yourself. If you have not been here, I mean, to me, this is a, a, bucket, a, a bucket list destination. Um, if you look at uh, some of the photos that uh, are kind of the most coveted um, uh, on the planet in, in travel, um, and that's, uh, they are in this city, and that's partially because this is a stunning destination. Um, I'm going to back away as we play the video that gives you more information about this beautiful city. City, 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 city. It's such a unique place. And it's not just the architecture and the beauty of the city. It's the people. The people are what makes this city rock or, or move. And there's just simply nothing like it in the world. It's very, very special. I teach history in high school. Growing up, I always cultivated my passion for history. I think the history of Quebec City is still very much alive. It's always evolving. It's always moving. Quebec City is an open-air museum. There are so many things to do, so many things to see. Of course, the most uh, significant piece of architecture for a lot of people 
and it's like going back into time. For the past 20 years, people have been so creative around the city. Public arts, cultural events, new restaurants. What's really unique about Quebec is the flavors. <laughs> When you visit a city, it's by the restaurant that you visit the feeling of that city. No matter where you go, you're going to be received well. It's really, really good. Merci, Sebastian. Is it? Mm -hmm. Of course, the French is being spoken everywhere, but the language barrier is insignificant. What I love about Quebec City is the proximity to nature. The mountains, the rivers, the trails are amazing. A lot of people are coming from all over the world just to ride there. It's really a feeling that you cannot get anywhere else. We are in Wendaki. <laughs> Wendaki, the culture, the place, the people, it's just for me so vibrant and colorful. You just have to be surprised by the city in the summertime. The summer festival, it, it's amazing. Well, it's the midsummer. People are so happy to be outside to enjoy life, enjoy music. Quebecers love to uh, work hard and they love to play hard. You'll never be bored in Quebec City, I can promise you that. It's uh, my absolute pleasure to introduce from Quebec Tourism, Simon Meunier. Give it up. I mean, I am so excited. Thank you, Christopher. I, I think I'm going to engage you. Huh? You make a great job with the, your discourse and how you enjoy the city, so thank you very much. Uh, it's from the heart, my friend. Thank you. So, hi everyone. We were really excited to, uh, to, to receive you in uh, June 9, 7, uh, 15 and 17. So, thank you for uh, a pleasure to meet you there. So, um, just by raising your hand, whoever came to Quebec City? Wow, it's pretty good. Whoever came to the province of Quebec? Even better. Whoever came in Canada? Oh, so I think we're going to try to have the same amount of N from next year. So I'm pretty proud to that. And uh, you see the video telling a lot about the Quebec City. Uh, we have a couple of friends uh, with me, like Robert, working for Destination Quebec City. We have uh, the provinces there too. So be uh, really, uh, really uh, well organized. And we are real, uh, have the opportunity to come to see us. And we're going to speak to you more about the Quebec City for sure. So we are really enjoying to see you there, uh, everyone. So thank you very much. The last thing I'll say, just having worked with the team from Quebec City intimately on multiple occasions, uh, when they say they're going to host something, they host something. Uh, they know how to, to make something happen. This is a, I, I, I'm very uh, close now to multiple members of the Quebec City team. They know what they're doing there. Get excited. Um, speaking of getting excited, uh, we've got a great conference coming forward. I feel like the last few days, this morning, we've set uh, the tone that we want for, for this conference. Get excited yourself. Um, get ready to learn. Talk to people. Um, and, and we hope that uh, everybody here leaves with, uh, with all those seeds that they can move forward and, uh, and water. And, and you know, we'll, we'll hope to see you at, at more TBEXs. But your job right now to enjoy this one in, in beautiful Basque country. So let's do one more round of applause and get moving. <laughs> 